to talk about this problem is what we call the pool ball illustration. We've used it in other occasions, but we're going to focus more carefully now on it from Hume's perspective. So we envision before us a simple pool table. And on the table, there is a cue ball. And then further down the table, there is an object ball. We'll call it the eight ball, if you will. And at the end of the table, there's a pocket. Now, the pool player wants to shoot the cue ball into the eight ball and knock the eight ball, in this case, into the corner pocket. Now, there's a series of things that takes place. First of all, you have the pool player. He selects his cue. He puts his chalk on the end of the tip. He takes his position at the end of the table. He sights down his line of sight. He has his cue stick in his hand. He moves his arm, which initiates the stroke. Because when he moves his arm, the movement of his arm causes the cue stick to move in the direction of the cue ball. And the cue stick now comes and hits the cue ball. And when it hits the cue ball, what happens? The cue ball starts to move or roll across the table. And we hope if this man's aim has been good, that is in the direction of the eight ball. Now, meanwhile, the eight ball is just sitting there on the table at rest. It's in a state of inertia. It's been just an eight ball. And the cue ball keeps rolling, keeps rolling, and it strikes the eight ball, boom. And as soon as the cue ball strikes the eight ball, what happens? The eight ball starts to move. And it moves in the direction of the pocket and hopefully will then drop into the corner pocket and the shot has been executed according to plan. Now, Hume is saying, we're standing here watching this. We're observing these things take place. And we see certain actions follow upon certain other actions that we see contiguous action or actions of contiguity. And that may be a word we don't use every day. 